Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. We are starting with breaking news for you this Thursday afternoon. A tragic story out of Thief River Falls, Minnesota. A child killed while walking to the school bus this morning. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson is on the scene with the very latest on this breaking story. He joins us live on the phone now. Neil? Yeah, this happened uh, seven miles south of Thief River Falls on Highway 59. Um, I just talked to a witness who was at the scene immediately after it happened. He said the victim is a seven-year-old girl. Now, he pointed out something interesting about this accident. He says the bus was positioned right at the girl's driveway, so she would not have had to cross the road to get on the bus. He speculated that maybe she crossed the, uh, the highway to chase her dog or something like that. But anyway, while crossing the uh, road, the highway again, she was hit by a northbound van and, and killed. Um, so at this point, uh, no details yet. At 12.30 today, the uh, state patrol was uh, holding a news conference to kind of put specifically out there what happened. But uh, a tragedy up here in uh, Thief River Falls, they'll stay on top of the story this afternoon. All right, Neil Carlson again covering the breaking news. The tragic death of a young girl this morning hit by a car while walking to her bus today in Thief River Falls or in the Thief River Falls area. And as Neil mentioned, much more on this story coming up tonight on Valley News Live or online at valleynewslive.com. We are following a developing story of Grand Forks as well. Police hunting for two suspects after shots were fired and a man was assaulted near UND early this morning. The victim says he was hit in the face after confronting two burglars at his house on Cambridge Street around 2 a.m. While investigating the incident, officers then discovered several bullet holes in the siding of the residence. Police are looking for two suspects. One is a white man, 5'10 to 5'11, about 200 to 220 pounds. The other, a muscular black man, about 6'5 and 250 pounds. He was last seen wearing a gray jacket. Call Grand Forks Police if you have any information. New details for you now about a shooting in Ransom County, North Dakota. The Ransom County Sheriff tells Valley News Live that it happened in Enderlin about 7 last night. A juvenile male was shot in the leg with a 22 rifle. He was taken to a Fargo hospital. The other person involved also under the age of 18, so their names are not being released. It happened in an alley outside a home. The sheriff says it appears that the shooting was an accident. The North Dakota BCI is assisting in the investigation. Well, new for you at noon, a crane had to be called in to remove a helicopter stuck on the top of Sanford Hospital in downtown Fargo this morning. AirMed Director Tim Meyer says the helicopter was preparing to land when it received some minor damage to its tail rotor. It was able to land safely on the rooftop helipad. No patients or crew members were on board with the pilot, and there were no injuries in the incident. Well, breaking for you at noon, the governor of Georgia has just issued mandatory evacuation orders for people in six coastal counties who are in the way of Hurricane Matthew. Florida, meanwhile, is preparing for a possible direct hit later tonight. The storm is packing winds up to 140 miles per hour as it battles the Bahamas. Marley Hall has the latest from Daytona Beach, Florida. A sign on a boarded up building says closed for business as Hurricane Matthew approaches Florida. Forecasters say Matthew has strengthened once again to a monster Category 4 storm. This is serious. The governor is concerned about the storm's powerful winds and storm surge. More than one and a half million people in the storm's path have been told to evacuate. There are no excuses. You need to leave. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Storm preparations continued across Florida. Shelves are empty. Officials issued hurricane warnings and watches from Florida to South Carolina. Here in Daytona Beach, streets are empty. Most people have evacuated. But across the state, 1,500 National Guard troops have been called up just in case. Matthew hit the Bahamas this morning, packing winds up to 125 miles per hour. Roads are littered with debris. Matthew devastated parts of Haiti. Poorly constructed homes are completely gone. People waded through knee-deep high water trying to reach higher ground. Matthew is blamed for at least 25 deaths, and that number could rise. Marley Hall, CBS News, Daytona Beach, Florida.
Now, there is some hurricane help from North Dakota that is on the way to America's East Coast. A Red Cross team of volunteers is set to leave Fargo at this hour, bound for Tallahassee, Florida. The first team deployed includes three response vehicles and four volunteers, but the Red Cross says that number may increase in the coming days. Well, things much quieter on the weather front here in the valley. Lots of sun. It's not lots of warming. Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green for a first look at our Thursday afternoon forecast. Thanks, Kyle. It's helped us out a little bit, but it's going to be a cold day all day long. We're currently at 48 degrees in Fargo and 45 in Grand Forks. Langdon still in the 30s at the noon hour, so not the warmest day in the world here. Hoping to get into the 50s in the Southern Valley at least this afternoon. We have two situations going on. We're kind of in between two systems. There's the snow associated with that big low that's been impacting us up to the north that may uh, move through uh, tonight and tomorrow, impacting our northern viewers. And then the area to the south, we're seeing those clouds streaming, some rain showers possible for our far southern viewing area later today, and perhaps even some snow in the Black Hills right now. We'll have to keep an eye on temperatures as this uh, continues to influence us into the nighttime hours tonight. I'll have more on that hour by hour forecast for you in just a few moments. Uh, but right now, at least, we get to enjoy that sun a little while longer. Sounds good, Lisa. We'll see you in a little bit. A disturbing story out of Texas has a community outraged. A family says their disabled child was intentionally set on fire and is now fighting for their life. Sharon Coe has the story, though we want to warn you the details may be hard to hear for some viewers. This open field near Wallace Street is where Tanya Casper says the disturbing event unfolded Sunday afternoon. Came out running. Casper says her nephew, 10-year-old Caden, was lured to the field where one boy doused him with gasoline and another set him on fire. Caden suffered severe burns covering 20% of his body. He's still in a medically induced coma. He had a lot of things going before this. Wearing hearing aids, he talked with the lisp. I mean, he was challenged from the get-go. And for him to have to face this new challenge, it's going to be overwhelming. The family is calling for the arrest of the boys who they say planned the attack. The fire chief did not want to comment on the intent or exactly who was involved. Still, the family calls Caden the victim and wants to see justice prevail. No child deserves to be be done like that. Sharon Coe, Ken's 5 Eyewitness News. Now, the fire marshal's office says one child has been taken into custody in connection with the incident. The victim's family is pressing for attempted murder charges to be filed. We've got some new information for you at noon on a story we first broke on the Valley today this morning. The woman who called police for help after driving into a slough in Clay County early this morning is now in jail, facing charges of driving after cancellation. Clay County Sheriff Bill Berkwitz says 29-year-old Laura Abeladinger of Moorhead called 911 just before 2 a.m. and said she was lost somewhere south of Hitterdahl. Deputies finally found her after about an hour of searching. Berkowitz says that she was cold and wet, but was not hurt. She had initially told deputies her vehicle had been stolen with her in it, but they have not found evidence that actually happened. Well, developing today, 17 people are being charged with a massive sex trafficking ring with ties to Minnesota, and law enforcement officials are still looking for four other people they believe are involved. Federal prosecutors say the women were from Thailand. They were brought to the U.S. and told they would become citizens, but were instead held prisoner. Eleven suspects were arrested Tuesday at various locations in Minnesota, California, Illinois, Georgia, and Hawaii.